Winston, thanks very much for joining us. First things first, how how did the, the McKenzie trademark. how did the conference go for you? Fantastic. Yeah. Any highlights? It was compelling. Yeah. The governor stumbled on some Martin Luther King words. He didn't even realise. You know, I remember watching the documentary on ML King, and he said in that last potent film, you know, it's been a long, hard road. And my eyes have seen the promised land. He, he, he mentioned in his speech about the promised land. And then Farage recently said, you know, it's been a long, hard road. Same thing. Really poignant. We've slogged our way through this far. It's been tiring. It's been tedious. We've trod the roads. And he said, we can go on to various different elections in Wales, Scotland, and here in London, and right the way across England. And if you remember, guys, recently he stated that maybe he's going to put his feet up and take it easy. He can't go on forever. Words like that were so poignant. Words to the effect that maybe soon I'll retire, you know? And um, he was talking about the media um, commenting on his, on his health, how he's feeling at the present moment, and what progress he's making. And even today he said, there were times when I felt as though I was on a hiding to nothing. But you know what, guys, he said, it's all paid off. And those, that speech, what he'd done today, was just so soulful, poignant, and that's what drives people like myself to stay on in politics and support the UK Independence Party because it's not just about me or Mr Farage or his army behind him. It's about the sovereignty of this country, people who care for the sovereignty of this country. That's what it's all about. And Obviously, we've got a general election around the corner. How are you feeling about that? Obviously, you're going back to London. Are you G'd up from the conference? Oh, I'm so wound up about this thing. Man, I've even been in training. I've had to go back to the gym and do a few rounds of sparring, you know. Um, you've got to be fit to take on this um, election. Even in, I mean, this media interview now, I'm so ready, so wound up, I'm talking, because guys like you, um, you need to make a living, you need to speak to people who matter, you need to get the news out there across the people, so I'm always um, accommodating to the media because they have a job to do just the same way as I do, you know, so um, yes, I'm very G'd up for this, um, this general election, it is the greatest general election this country's ever known, the fireworks haven't begun yet, but they're going, it's coming, people are making their pitch, you know. <laughs> You've alluded to boxing. Um, do you have any comments on the Kelly Maloney speech? Um, I didn't watch the Kelly Maloney speech. I'm a little bit disillusioned. I wouldn't say a little bit. I'm disillusioned about um, that particular situation. Um, Frank Maloney, I know, um, as a boxing promoter, and I'm quite dismayed to see what's happened. Uh, and I wish him well. I, you know, I really... Honestly, sincerely wish this guy well, who's now Kelly, wish him well. Um, it's quite a shock, really, and I still can't take it in. This, is, this guy was, um, this Frank Maloney, was one of the most respected, clever boxing technicians in the country, if not in the world. He was so clever, and then I don't know what's happened in his life, but whatever he's doing... And um, whatever he's chosen to do with his life, good luck to him. And Mr. Farage did say at the end of that speech that UKIP is open for all people. Yeah. Um, would you uh, echo those thoughts? Oh, 100%. You see, it's no good being a part in a party and being at total odds with the leader. And if you've got a problem, you've got to sit down and work it out. In this case, UKIP is, we're headed towards real change not just change beckoning to the uh, the, uh, the voters but change within the party and as you've seen 
in the past few weeks. We've had a few people come out of the come out of the woodwork with a few biased comments and um, uh, a few um, racist comments and things like that. And the, you know, uh, the governor's promptly put them down, and that's his job. And I believe that whatever your leader is doing. And if he resonates with the voters, because don't forget, the voters are the real, they're the real machinery. They're the people who, who put people into office. They're the people who, they're the kingmakers. So whatever the leader's doing, he knows, the governor knows that the people are behind him. And that's what's, or most of the people anyway. And that's what's so important. So you're quite happy where how the party leadership has dealt with these people who have made racist comments recently, uh, the disciplinary measures, etc. I'm really pleased about that. And there's a particular aspect, there is a particular aspect at the present moment that I guess I'm a little bit disillusioned with. And that simple fact is that um, when we talk about race, racism, and uh, things like that, particularly racism and um, um, immigration. I would love to see my party appeal, particularly to the Commonwealth, people from the Commonwealth, and tell them, look, we understand the Commonwealth. We welcome you. When we refer to immigration, we're referring to illegal immigration. We're referring to people who smuggle their way into this country and are not really deserved of the benefits that they get. We're referring to people who are not deserved of the facilities we offer in this country. That's what we're talking about. No, immigration doesn't mean black people. Immigration applies. Illegal immigration. Now let's get this right. Illegal immigration applies to people who are not, do not have the specific papers, have not been legally passed to be here in this country. That's what we're, applying, we're, we're referring to. And these are the people who are dragging down this country, dragging down society and making life so difficult for others. And I wanted to end on a sort of lighter note. I noticed you've brought your hat with you. It's your sort of trademark. How? What's the what's the state of it? Is it in, is it in good health? Oh man, this is my head. As you can see, guys, um, they've taken it off my head so many times. Um, this is my trademark, and um, I need a new one now. This now I bought this hat in Bond Street, the most famous street in in, in the country. One of the most famous streets in the country. Cost me nearly two hundred pounds. Now I'm gonna have to get a new one. <laughs> do, do you have a special hat fund for for the? these incidences? Well, I just rely on the Duchess, Marianne Bonness, my manager and PA, to um, look out for what I need. So Duchess, you're going to have to get me a new hat. <laughs> Mr. McKenzie, thanks very much for your time. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. And it's a pleasure. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you.